five o'clock, we will go ahead and begin this meeting of the Kokomo City Board of Zoning Appeals. I would uh, ask first that if you have a cell phone, make sure it's on silent, please. And then uh, I invite you all to join us as we stand and uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. item on the agenda this evening is the approval of the minutes from the Tuesday, July 6th, 2021 BZA meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the July, or July 6th, 2021. All right, we have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, thank you. Our first case to be brought before the board this evening is case P11-V-21. Yeah, Mr. President, the petition of Rob Little, uh, Degra 4, requesting a variance of 75% to section 6.48E, parking standard variance of three trees to section 6.27B, landscaping variance of 35% to section 3.30, maximum lot coverage, and a variance to section 412, uh, architectural overlay uh, building location. This is in the C1 zone at 507 North Washington. Do I have a motion on this case? Case number P11-V-21 and adopt the findings of the petitioner as those of the board and make those findings part of the record. Second. Right, thank you both. Have any board members had any ex parte communication regarding this case? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, would the petitioner, whoever's representing this case, please step to the microphone. If you'd give us your name, your address for the record, and just first of all, just kind of tell us what it is you're wanting to do. Okay. My name is Rob Little. And I own Degel Floor Covering at 507 North Washington Street in Kokomo. Um, we're just trying to get a building permit, but because of our lot size and everything, we're trying to get the variances done. And it says, the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. This addition would eliminate unwarranted traffic cutting across the property between streets. Jackson Street has been vacated, but individuals still cut across the property. This creates a hazard for our uh, our customers when they come and they have little kids getting out of the car and stuff. People just fly through there. So this building that we'd be putting on would kind of block some of that traffic. Um, you would still be able to get around the building um, because on the south side we still have to be 20 feet off of the property line. So there'd still be a, a right away there. Um, the use and value of this area adjacent to the property included in the variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. This would not affect the adjacent properties, but only enhance the area. The strict application of this term of the zoning ordinance will result in a partial, dif partial difficulty. The, si the situation shall not be self-imposed, nor be based on a perceived reduction of or restriction of economic gain. Existing zoning hinders this um, partial use of the storage shop area for existing carpet store. This also affects other zoning requirements for this proposed addition. Okay, thank you. So what exactly, can you just kind of explain to us what is it that you're hoping to do that when it's finished, what will life look like? It's gonna be a warehouse. Um, and it's gonna go out from the back of our building. I was wanting to build off the back of the building the way it is, so we could have more parking up front for the customers. I was trying to take the building back as far as I could. So it's built to the west? It would be built to the um, south. Okay. Because our parking lot's on the south side of our building, and we got like two lots there, as you can see. Um, so it would be built, probably I'm gonna say it's 40 to 50 feet wide. I can't remember with the, the prints. I think it's like 50 feet wide all the way to the property, it's like 80 some feet, not be there, you're, then you'd still have your 20 foot clearance. And then cars would still be able to park on the south side? The, the employees will be parked in the back lot, as you see on the, 
the diagram, the, the print out there, that there is a back lot back there, so the employees would be parked up back in the back probably, and then the we would have some parking up front for customers, yes. Is that the one that has A's, B, A, B, C, B on it? That rendering? Yes. That is. Do we have a, another copy of that handy? My, mine is either, either that or my eyes. Uh, I don't know what A, B, C, D means, but it's on there. Okay, there it is. Okay, you're fine. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you. The, the photocopy, I mean, some of the light right. things didn't copy real well, so I just, I see the letters, but I didn't, this is helpful. Yeah, it's a little bit of that Okay, so what's each letter mean? What's A? Yeah. Um, over here on, the A is five foot green space between, between the building and the parking, it looks like. Yes. Say B is parking, C is handicap parking, and D is the property line. Which is existing building? Yeah, it barely see it. Let's turn left. This, this, this oh, is right. an existing building. Yeah, right here. It is existing. And there's a green door gap in front of here where the building stops. And then it goes back to here. Basically, you're coming out of the, the back, the back, back side of the building. Yeah. Uh, this way. Yes. And this is this, this is this the additional parking. Okay. You say employees would park. We'll probably park back here. Get this whole lot back here. Okay. There's a back. There's a road leading to that back That's entrance as well. Yeah. Yeah. So here was employee parking. Back in here. So these. Those things, there's, there's some right there, there's work trucks so there. So your building's gonna come off. This is our building. This is, and the, see that concrete pad? This building's coming off right there. And that concrete pad on? Yeah, out to here. So, any other board members on your diagram, the picture on the very front of our packet where it says lot 13 is the current structure. And to the left of where it says lot 12 coming off of lot 13 is a little rectangle that's it the pad he says basically that's the part of the area the building where it will come to the south like that concrete pad is correct and then is it what's the depth of the present building i think it's like 80 feet it's like a it's like a 50 by 80 I was just trying to give our front doors up there, and I was just trying to give customers more access to the front of the building there so they wouldn't have to walk across the warehouse. And if you're going to have green space here, why do you need a variance for the trees? I don't know. I'm just, I mean, I, that's what I was told to do, so. Is there a, um, Mr. Shewan, on, on the tree variance? Can, can you put trees in that green space? We could put some, like, you know, short trees. It wouldn't be big trees, but, yeah, they would be kind of like what's up and down Washington now, something like that's what I'm, what I'm imagining. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. We made everybody stick to the, to the green yeah. space standards. And mm -hmm. If you've got room, then we appreciate Is that it. enough? Whatever it calls for. They, they've got okay. a standard that you need to meet. Well, they told me I, I didn't have enough. That's why I had to come here. You don't have enough for to th – that's why – you don't have enough to meet the entire landscaping plan, but if you could put some trees in that green space. That Absolutely. Would I would really, that would, yeah. That would help. You're still going to need the variance because you don't have enough green space to do everything that the variance, that the ordinance requires. But if you could put some trees in that existing green space, that would, that would certainly help, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. How tall is this building going to be on the side? I don't know. I think it's going to be really Um... I think it's, it's we're going to have probably 14 foot high ceilings because I don't want to go much higher because it would be oversized compared to the other building. So, garage door entry, well, garage door is going to be about a 12 foot height. And that's going to be located where? Um, it will be all located on the front of the building, probably about where the alley was vacated, or approximately. Or the street, I guess. Be 
there will be there will be two garage doors, one on each side, and then we'll have some entrance doors as well. Correct. There will not be any on the south side of the building that I'm, you know, right now. Yeah, there will be walk-in doors. There will be a walk-in door beside each garage door. And then I think, code, I think they make me put a couple more down toward the, the existing building on each end. So there, I'm guessing, if I remember right, there's two entrance doors on the, on the uh, west side and two entrance doors on the east side. Printout was so light, so we're trying to compare it to our the first page that has the sky view. Well, One on the east side, one on the west side, if I heard him correctly. show you here so, so you can know what we're talking about is instead of going this way one question that uh, we're wondering is, is why could it not be that might be uh, this way and but, but we'll, we'll ask you that um, wait so you can answer from the microphone so we have it on record because the, the yeah, question is I mean okay. you know you know your layout better yeah, than we do and that's not original so she's got us yeah. sure Do you need any of those copies? You can have them. I can print more. Okay. Okay. So Mike's Mike's question is: right now he's building to the south this way. Instead of, I mean, he's still building to the south, but along the, the length of the building. So, I from my question, from my answer for that is. Number one, customer entrance, they could park closer to the front door, that's all I was thinking. The other thing is, this is gonna shut a lot of traffic down flying through the parking lot when we're on the fork truck with a big roll of carpet on, unloading semis and stuff. Um, they come flying through there and they about hit us every day. Um, and the gentleman behind us has is, is already called me today, wanted me to put up uh, slow, you know, slow traffic or something because he's he can't even back out of his garage because people fly through there because and i think a lot of it right now is because of the road construction all around that area there's a ton of it as you know yeah. um so sure people are so. trying to go everywhere and it's just it's getting dangerous so that would be one that would be my answer for that you're saying they use the vacated jackson street absolutely yes it's like yeah there'll be cars flying through there all day long and, and we've had we've had complaints at the uh, office before about that, that. I'm just afraid somebody's going to get hurt. And I thought if I could, if I could just cut some of that down. I mean, they would, you'd still be able to get down on the end of the building there, but at least it would be a little bit more harder for them. And and I would have a little more area where I could put a speed bump up or something on the end of the building. Where right now I'd have to go all the way across the parking lot. And I think it would hide some of the back of the 
the backside of the town too, you know, whether it's just keep people, they throw trash back there all the time and I'm picking up trash all the time on the back lot, on my back lot back there. I mean, you'll find mattresses, you find anything you can imagine back there in that parking lot. Are there other questions right now from the board for the petitioner? If not, we'll, um, I thank you for answering those questions. So you have read into the, the, the record what we call your findings of fact. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hear the staff's finding of fact, okay. um, which is the staff's answers to those same questions you answered, which sometimes brings up more questions from the board. That's fine. And then, uh, and then we'll see if there's anyone in the audience who wants to be heard regarding this case. So Mr. Sheline, if you could read the staff findings for us. Yes, staff findings for case P11-V-21, approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. The approval of the requested four variances will not create any safety hazards, block traffic views, or encroach on any property line or recorded easements. It will not be harmful to the general welfare of the community. The use and value of the area adjacent to the property included in the variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. While the petitioner requests variances for parking, landscaping, lot coverage and building location, the new building will still meet all other aesthetic standards prescribed by the architectural control overlay. <clears throat> As the new build will be aesthetically consistent with the rest of the area, it will not negatively affect neighboring properties. The strict application of the terms of this zoning ordinance will result in a practical difficulty. This situation should not be self-imposed nor be based on perceived reduction of or restriction of economic gain. If the variances are not granted, the petition will be unable to build to best suit his property and needs and will be unable to utilize his property as desired. Okay, thank you. So did I understand it right? He is gonna have landscaping in the front of his new building? Yes. Yes, yes wherever that green space is. Yes, where that green space is on that paper is what, we're, is what our proposal is right now. If we need to change it a little, we can do what we need to do, just let me know. Basically, you just get a building to the south of you right off the end of your road. Correct. And according to this diagram, I think we said C is handicapped parking, D is regular parking, so it looks like seven parking spaces maybe for customers, and then you said the- employees The employees were parking in the back, yes. Well, he's got plenty of parking spaces. The reason we needed the variance because all the parking is in the front. Okay. And our ordinance requires only 25% of the front. Okay. We could move. He has enough spaces, uh, but all the spaces are in are in front. Okay. So the need for the variance. Okay. Thank you. Yes. But from I guess from a perspective on this lot six that's to the southwest. If he added additional spaces there, then that would put a majority, not that he's required to, but that would make the majority of the parking in the back anyway. Correct, correct, yes. Okay. Okay, are there any questions from the board after having heard the petitioner's findings and the staff findings? Greg, just explain it. Just, it's not a big deal for the overlay, but it's not a big deal. The overlay, the way the overlay is set up, um, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but that's the way it was written years ago. Um, the the new building is going to be close to the rear property line. Architectural standards in that overlay uh, says the building needs to be uh, closer to the side property lines. Therefore, the need for the variance to the architectural standards for the for the building concept. Does that make sense? If the, just for the sake of mm -hmm. clarity, if the building was running east and west, would it still need a variance? Yes. 
had to think about that for a minute. But you have some more. Is there any other? Are there any other questions from the board? Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard regarding this case? Is there anything you'd like to add before we take it to a vote? Not that I can think of. Okay. Well, having heard no other questions and no one else having any comments, Mr. Shulman, you're done on all yours? I'm done. Okay. We do have a motion and a second for the approval of case B11V-21. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next case to be heard this evening is case B13-V-21. Uh, the petition of Ron Shanks requesting the variance of 440 square feet to section 6.10B, cumulative square footage, uh, section 3.25 in a VR zone. Uh, this is at 824 South Lewis Street. Do I have a motion on this case? I move that we approve case number Thank you both. Have any board members had ex parte communication on this case? No. Nope, we're good? Okay. Um, Mr. Shanks or whoever's representing, go, go ahead and give us your name and your address and then kind of tell us what it is you're wanting to do. Hi guys, everybody. Uh, my name is Ron Shanks. I own a house at 824 South Lewis. I'm wanting to build a pole barn to put my cars in and just my general stuff, my mowers, stuff like that. So, yeah. Where, where on the property? On the north east corner. Once the barn's up, I want to eventually tear the garage down that's there now. It was built in 66, I think, 67. I can't remember when it was. My grandpa built the property or the house and stuff. Okay. So the existing garage is going to be? Yes, built. yes. Yeah. It's kind of de de decrepit looking. It was built a little low. Water gets inside of it. It's just, it needs to go. And I need a bigger barn anyway, so. You guys think you're going to put a whole new driveway and everything in on the north side of your VR? I'm just going to continue the drive like it is and into the garage. It's there now. Basically, when it's gone, just drive into the pole barn. That Would you come off like Lewis, the east west street there, and just, you're going to have a big long driveway? Well, I'm really not going to change too much. Uh, I'm just, like I said, the driveway goes, it's on the south side of the property, and then you turn into the garages there now. I'm just going to continue just 20 feet, whatever, of grass, and then I'll be to my new pole barn entrance. Basically what it'll amount to. Just the driveway, yes, yes. Do what? Overhead doors? Yes, I'll have two 10 foot doors. And those will face the south? The south, yes, sir. No other doors on the other side? I'll have a walk in door on the west side, more towards the south end on that corner. I've got some old cars, and I just want to make sure they're not outside or anything else, actually. So you said it'll be on the northeast part of the property? The northeast property, yes. Off the line as much as it needs to be and all that stuff, according to code. Okay. Just a note um, for the packet on the first page of the packet. It says the pole barn would be 1,440 square feet and located on the northwest elevation of the property. So I might make a note that that actually is the northeast. Oh, yes, northeast. Did I, did I say northwest? I'm not sure if you prepared this or we did. We okay. It might be from us. Um, okay, I just didn't know if I did. Because that would be like me. <laughs> we just wanted to clarify that it would Yeah, it'd be the northeast corner, basically. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
You're welcome. Yes. Yes, the uh, finding of facts about number one, the uh, the approval will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, general welfare of the community. Uh, no, the it wouldn't be. The building will be used to store my cars and other possessions. They're nicer cars. I don't want to sit outside. It'll be uh, built to code and my standards and the outside will be appealing and blend in as well. And number two, the value of the area adjacent to the property, including a variance, will be not be affected in any substantially adverse manner. No, the contrary, I feel I'll be having the barn professionally built with my items inside as opposed to all being outside of the home. It should be more value and, a, and be positive in manner. The strict application of the terms of this zoning ordinance will result in practical difficulty. The situation will not be self-imposed nor based on a perceived reduction of or restriction of economic gain. I will not move into the home. I cannot move into the home without having additional structure built because of the cars that I mentioned and my personal belonging is being outside. I have no plans to use the structure for any kind of economic gains only to protect my personal items. Plus, like my grandpa, he built a house when I was five years old. And the garage is there now, it will be torn down after the building is completed. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? No, I'm not, I'm still, I still am. <laughs> the size of the current garage? I think it's 24 by 24, but I might also add, what, it isn't? Yeah, it's no, no, oh, you were shaking your head. I'm like, well, maybe, I don't know. I thought it was. The thing I'm thinking is, if I tear the garage down, I might leave the cement there and basically use it as a, a pad to park on, maybe. I don't know. I mean, something to consider. The variance still has to be given right. because the garage is still there. Still there. Right, right, right. I don't, oh. I don't think he's saying he's going to tear the garage down the day after the new building. No, right. no. Right, right. So right. They're, they're, that's why the variance is still needed. Yeah. Yes. Is the driveway back to the new garage going to be gravel? Or gravel? I'm just going to, yes, yeah, so I'm going to leave it like it is. I'm going to clean it up a little bit and square up everything and make it look nicer. What's there? I'm just going to continue. To the north. My concern was you said that you know one of the reasons why building the other end of the property is is because the driveway now floods and everything else gets into the existing garage. Well, it's actually a low spot because when Conco Pontiac went in there, they their one of their roofs they got their drains go down the ground and exit actually exit out towards my property. So that doesn't help matters either. Their their runoff. But it's just a little low there, but my new barn will not be that low. The house is higher. I would say the garage is probably this much lower than the house, which we never could understand why my grandpa didn't lift it up, and at least another block. But the new built barn will be higher. Any other questions before we have the staff finding? Staff findings for case P13-B-21. Approval will not be injurious to public health. Safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. The requested variance for additional square footage will not cause injury to the general welfare of the community. 
The variance will not allow the petitioner to impede on the setback, record of easements, or right of ways. The use and value of the area adjacent to the property, including the variance, will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. Granting this variance will not affect the use or value of the neighboring properties and residences. The strict application of terms of this zoning ordinance will result in practical difficulty. This situation shall not be self-imposed nor be based on a perceived reduction of or restriction of economic gain. Without the variance, the petitioner will be unable to build the suits he needs and will be unable to store all of his personal property and cars as he sees fit. Thank you. Any additional questions from the board at this point? I haven't heard both the petitioner's and staff's comments. Anyone in the audience who would like to be heard regarding this case? Okay. If you could step to the microphone, please. Give us your name and address for the record. Tim Sheets. Well, I'm sorry. We'll wait until you get there. It's being recorded for the record. Tim Sheets, 822 South Lewis. I live next door. I just wanted to know. Which direction are you? North. Okay. I just want to know how close the garage is going to be to the existing property line and to the easement that's in the back of the property. Okay. If you want to step to the side, we'll have Mr. Shanks answer that. But he's not asking for a variance to that, which means wherever he's saying it'll be legal. But he can. Like the current setback is what it's going to go by. Yeah, so he can answer. The existing garage is right on the property line. So is that the existing setback? No. But we'll let him answer that, where he's going to place it, how far from the property line. I was told five feet from all the property line. Plus, I got to allow for the sewer that went down through on the east end, and I will allow for that, too. So five foot. I mean, I might go more than five, but I know I can't go closer. You can't go less than five. Yes. According to you guys, I mean. So five foot is the setback in that zoning district. So as long as he's five foot or greater, he's fine. And he has to be off of the sewer, which he will be. So that answers your question, sir. Well, I know the existing garage is right on the property line. Well, I understand, but we're not talking about the existing garage. The other one is going to come more into his yard. The new garage would be more to the west. It would be more to the west and more to the, yeah, well, yeah, more to the west than the current garage. Right. The current. He's five foot off the property line to the north. Exactly. Which is what the current building, the current ordinances are. When the existing garage was built, who knows what those standards were or what the ordinance, you know, what that looked like back then. So, yeah, he's not building it based on where the current garage is. Well, I mean, I don't care because I don't think anybody's ever going to use that back there anyhow. Yeah, I don't think so either. Four, three, no. All right. Does that answer your question? All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments from the audience or the board? Mr. Sheline, anything else from you? No. Mr. Shanks, anything you'd like to add before we vote? I don't know what else to say. Okay. All right. So we do have a motion and a second for the approval of case P13-D-21. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, and everybody. Appreciate it. Is that it? Do I stay or? You're more than welcome to or you can go. Do I pick my permit up after you guys' place? Yeah, you can come swing by the office starting tomorrow or any time after. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. All right. Our next case on the agenda is case P03-1010, Ryan Hoffman v. Village of Lincoln. Yes, Petition of Americo Real Estate Company request a special exception for Section 3.31 for a storage facility in C2 zone. This is at 705 North Dixon Road. I'll give a little background before they come up. This is the old Kmart property, and U-Haul is asking to put a second location in Kokomo. They're going to keep their original location on the top of the fountain and put a second location in at the old Kmart building. And I have some pictures here 
because they've got two cases. I, I'll pass some pictures um, of what the new building that they want to build is going to look like, the new storage building, and also how they're going to revamp the current structure that's there. So I'll pass those pictures around to you. And, those, and these pictures are not exact. They were just, Mr. Stefani gave me those just to kind of give me an idea uh, on what the, what the existing property is going to look like. So these aren't exact but they can give you an idea, uh, okay? All right, thank you. Let me find those and I'll pass those out. Okay, so case P09-SE-21, do I have a motion on this case? I move to approve case P09-SE-21, Shop Plains, Petition to the yeah. Board, Nicholas Reynolds, part of the, part of the record. Second. All right, thank you both. Any uh, ex parte communication regarding this case? Any ex parte from down no. this way? You guys no, are good? Sir. All right. Okay, so whoever's representing this case, if you'll come to the microphone, give us your name, your address for the record. Hello, my name is Mike Eastwood, um, 705 North Dixon. Um, <clears throat> representing you all in this case. Okay, so uh, Mr. Sheline kind of gave us an overview, as you heard. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Kind of give an explanation. Are we going to run both of these at the same time or separately? No, they're two separate cases. Okay. So for so this specific one, we are just this using is just for a special exception yep. for the new storage building. So we're just trying to turn a our, our reuse a Kmart into U-Haul self storage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So will will the storage all be inside? Correct. The building's approximately 75,000 square feet. Um, we're probably going to get about 40,000 square feet of it, so we're talking about maybe 700 indoor storage rooms. But that's give or take on what it actually looks like when we get inside. Can, can you say that again? Um, it's about 75,000 square feet. We get yeah, the current 40, Kmart. 000. Yep, so the current Kmart's about 75,000 square feet. We can only roughly use 40% of that. Uh, so it's going to be some, yeah. So we're talking about roughly 700 on the high end, um, but it depends on, you know, the building's condition when we get in, yeah, where the risers are, everything that way. You say you can only use 40%. And net rentable, yeah. Well, I mean, we still have to have space for people to pull in. We still have to have space for our retail. You know, we, we can't just make it wall to wall storage, unfortunately. Yeah, so 40 percent. You're saying okay. Yeah. You can use 40 percent for the storage unit. Correct. I'm with you. And there's going to be a commercial component as well. Uh, they'll do uh, install hitches, things of that nature, in that in the existing building. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like a service department. Pardon me. Basically, like a service department where they serve. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, okay. I guess. Is nope. Sure, absolutely. absolutely. My name and yep, address. Awesome. You got it down. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Stefani, 2727 North Central Phoenix, Arizona. Um, to answer your question, yes, a full retail store. There'll be about a 5,000 square foot full retail store, boxes, all the supplies that people need to move um, that will be included in, in the building. The reason for the 40%, we have to count bathrooms, aisles. Um, all of that takes quite a bit of a big chunk of a building so 40 percent is about what we'll net out of it okay yes. yeah I'm clear now I, I was thinking that like I can see at first I was thinking why can you guys why do you guys want to get 40 <laughs> right <laughs> right yeah. I wish I could get more but no <laughs> I'm with you so 40 percent of it will be used for the units correct the rest will be aisles and restrooms the retail showroom uh takes up a it's actually going to be more towards like 7,000 how many square foot. service bays are there going to be uh, there'll be just one. Just the one service yep. bay to do the hitches? The hitches, that's it. Yeah, it's, yeah. just hitches. We don't service vehicles there. That's just okay. the installation of a hitch. Okay. And those doors, or that service door will face, um, face the north? Or? I'm turning around. Yeah. The, the big, it faces the Dixon. Yes, front. yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're like, man, I just said I'm from Phoenix. I know. I think. Is that what you said, Phoenix? Yes. Okay. 
Okay. So anything else on the explanation that you guys want to add before I throw out to see if they have questions? I'm good. Uh, no, in, in a nutshell, you guys got the picture of what it is. It's, sure. it's I guess my question is this picture here. Yes. Is that a separate building? Yes, that's going to that's that's what they're getting the special exception for as well is an outdoor storage building plus allowing storage inside the existing building. Correct. So so this outside storage is this building is it's going to have inside inside storage as well. That'll be yeah, an open building on the inside, correct. And how many of those will there be? Just one. And we're uh, northwest side. Thank you. It is northwest. Is it north? Still Dixon. Side. Yeah. Northeast. Northeast. Okay. East. Yeah. I was say northwest is going to end up in the building. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Huh? Okay. That building's the next game. That's that's the next game. Yes. Okay. I see that now. Okay. That's what. Yeah. All right. So strike that question. <laughs> Okay. Any questions from the board before we get the staff or the petitioner's findings? If you want to go ahead and read your findings for the record. Petitioner's finding of facts. A. The proposal will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morales, and general welfare of the community. Our response. The proposal will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morales, and general welfare of the community. Our uses are consistent with the policy and purpose of the zoning ordinance, as the intent of the C2 district is to allow for moderate to high impact uses. That offers a wide variety of retail, commercial services, and establishments. U-Haul Moving and Storage is a multi-use, one-stop shop for all community members moving and storage needs. Our services and products are the benefits to the sur are benefit the surrounding areas. B. The requirements and development standards for the request use as prescribed by this zoning ordinance will be met. The buildings meet the minimum requirement for front and side setback requirements on the zoning district. Our response. The requirements and development standards for the request use as prescribed for zoning ordinance will be met. C. The granting of the exception will not subvert the general purposes served by the zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure our other property or use in the same district and vicinity. Our response, the granting of the exception will not subvert the general purposes served by this zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure or property, other property or uses in the same district and vicinity. Our proposed use will not adversely affect the existing use or usability of adjacent or nearby properties as we are complementary to existing commercial uses. D. The proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein, the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance, and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan. Our response. The proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein, the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance, and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan. It is our goal to work with the city to ensure the U-Haul facility is characteristic of the neighborhood. All right, thank you. Let's go ahead and jump into the staff findings. Uh, staff findings for case PO9-SE-21. The proposal will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. The planned U-Haul store and storage facility will not negatively affect the general welfare of the community. The existing building will be up updated and revitalized with the storage units, and the petitioners plan to build a single separate building, <coughs> excuse me, as dried-up storage. The requirements and development standards for the requested use as prescribed by this zoning ordinance will be met. The buildings meet the minimum requirements for front and side setback requirements in the zoning district. The petitioners are requesting variances for landscaping, but, but all other development standards will be met. The variance for salt are for foundation plantings and landscaping islands that petitioners does not plan to include in their renovation. The granting of the exceptions will not subvert the general purposes served by this zoning ordinance and will not permanently injure other property or uses in the same district and vicinity. This business will operate with hours similar to other businesses in the plaza, opening 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday and Saturday, uh, and Saturday 7 a.m. through 8 p.m. Friday, and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. 
The petition is planned to offer a collection of services including self-storage, truck and trailer sharing, and other uh, retail sales of packing materials, allowing a productive business to inhabit this previously empty box store to help revitalize the existing shopping center and will not cause injury to neighboring property. The proposed use will be consistent with the character of the district therein, the spirit and intent of this zoning ordinance and the Kokomo Comprehensive Plan. The City of Kokomo Comprehensive Plan designates this area for general commercial uses. As the area is already highly commercial, this use for a storage facility will not be disrupted. Okay, thank you. Question. What about the uh, effects uh, the foundation and the landscape of the uh, islands that the buffer zones that still be there front and side? Yes, correct. Correct. We'll talk about that in the next case. Okay. Yes. That's Absolutely. the next case, Mike. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> a little confusing. I know they're talking about. I, I just want to make sure yep. this, this is not on this that's superseding. That's fine. Nope. Nope. <laughs> you know I'm sure the bot don't show. No. <laughs> um, so we have the hours. I'm sure that's when someone needs to come pick up something or whatever. But how will, if someone has a storage unit inside, is there, do they each have their own code or something? Or how do they access that outside of hours? Or do they? Yeah, so w every customer has their own individualized code. It's how we maintain who has entered and exited the building. It's part of our safety. Um, and for people to get into the building, they would just swipe their card or put in a pin to gain access into the facility. Thank you. And not all customers are able to access the building 24-7. So only people that have earned that right, you know, pharmaceutical companies, stuff of that nature, can come in after closing hours. Oh, okay. made these renovations to previous buildings? Yes, very much so. I think this is our 38th came in. Just through my wife. Yeah, <laughs> through my family grew up in Kmart too. It's weird. Will there be, like occasionally will you guys do any kind of blue light specials? <laughs> <laughs> I don't the think hardest thing to find is a blue light, believe it or not. <laughs> You said yes. My next question was going to be, will you bring back the subs? We have heard the staff findings. We've heard the petitioner's findings. We've heard an explanation. Um, are there other questions from the board at this time? Anyone in the audience wishing to be heard? Okay, we do have a motion and a second for the approval of case P09-SE-21. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, congratulations. We'll move on to the next case, which only matters because that one passed. <laughs> if that one didn't pass, I have a feeling we wouldn't be hearing case P12-B-21. Yes, petition of Americo Real Estate Company requesting a variance to section 6.27D foundation planting and variance to section 6.27 D3, landscaping islands. Uh, and again, this is at 705 North Dixon Road. Uh, I, ju I just want to say before we get into this case, one of the reasons that they're asking for the variance is uh, we've had several conversations over the last year probably uh, on this particular development. Uh, and with a U-Haul, as you all know, uh, U-Hauls uh, like to have their, their trucks set out uh, along the road so people can see mm -hmm. them, uh, which is fine. Uh, our, first, our first thought was when, when we uh, started talking about this development was we wanted to uh, soften that with as much landscaping as we possibly could being on Dixon Road. So therefore, myself and staff and uh, administration uh, mm -hmm. kind of preferred that most of the landscaping was up front along Dixon Road uh, to soften that that uh, that corridor there a little bit from, from the trucks because with the old Kmart building being so far off of Dixon, foundation plantings and stuff wouldn't be seen that much unless you were walking into the store anyway. So we, we felt that the, that the uh, landscaping should be geared more towards off of Dixon Road to soften that. So therefore the need for the variance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anything you guys want to address regarding those? I echo Greg. 
All right. <laughs> we, yeah. I move to approve. Oh, you know what? We don't have a motion. I'm going to ask for a motion. We will. <laughs> I move that we approve case number P12-C-21 and adopt the findings of the petitioner as those of the board and make those findings part of the record. Second. Thank you both. How many board members had any ex parte communication regarding this case? Mm -hmm. Other than just a minute ago when we were talking about that picture? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that being said, <laughs> nothing to add to what Mr. Sheline has said. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and read your findings for this case? Petitioner's finding effects. Number one, the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morales, and general welfare of the community. Our response. The approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morales, and general welfare of the community. The landscape proposed on our current site plan is not only a drastic improvement from current site conditions, but it far exceeds existing landscaping on abutting and nearby properties. It is our goal to work with the city to ensure our U-Haul store is characteristic of the neighborhood. Number two, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property included in the variance will not be affected in subsequently adverse manners. Our response, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property included in the variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. By revitalizing this vacant property, we mm -hmm. will be drawing in more customers to the area, which benefits neighboring commercial businesses. Number three, the strict application of the terms of this zoning ordinance will result in a practical difficulty. Mm -hmm. This situation shall not be self-imposed, nor be based on a perceived reduction of the restoration of economic gain. Our response, the strict application of the terms of the zoning ordinance will result in a practical difficulty. This situation is not self-imposed, not, uh, nor is it based mm -hmm. on a perceived reduction of our restriction of economic gain. There is an extensive buffer that is existing to the northern side of the property. In addition to what is existing, we are proposing 13 additional trees along North Dixon, one tree for every 30 feet, which meets the frontage tree requirement. As mentioned above, the landscaping we are proposing is not only a significant improvement to the existing conditions, but it goes way beyond any of what our neighboring properties have been held to. We have worked closely with our staff over the last few months to fine-tune the site plan to ensure the intent and the spirit of the ordinance and spirit of the neighborhood is met. Okay, thank you. Staff findings? Staff findings for case P12-B-21. Approval will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. The proposed variances will not cause injury to the general welfare of the community. The variance requested will not allow the petitioner to block vision or impede on any reported easements or setbacks. The use and value of the area adjacent to the property, including the variance, will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. The landscaping variance requested will not affect the surrounding property. The addition of tree lines along the front of the property will help soften the look of the area and improve the appearance, appearance of the strip. The strict application in terms of this zoning ordinance will result in a practical difficulty. This situation shall not be self-imposed nor be based on a perceived reduction of or restriction of economic gain. If the variance is not granted, the petitioner will be unable to avoid <coughs> pardon me, additional landscaping costs. Good. Thank you. Jeff, would you mind... Uh, for the board's information, I, th I know you gave me a dollar figure of how much you were going to put into this development. Yeah, so I, I don't want to—I don't want to throw that number out if I'm wrong. Well, if you guys are paying attention, steel and wood have uh, not <laughs> gone down in price. So um, this project's roughly going to be somewhere upwards to 10 million um, investment in, into the property. Um, it could be higher. Um, again, right now steel so is out of control. So. Uh, after all said and done, uh, about 10 million plus. And how many jobs? Will uh, we'll probably net out of this somewhere between 15 and 20 jobs. And that's, uh, again, I, I want to make a, a point that we have all intentions of op keeping the other store that's been there for 30 years up and running. We've just outgrown it. We've been blessed. We've been in this city for 30 years now. Um, we've been blessed to do so well to be able to afford to add this product line to our existing. Um, so that's. 15 to 20 additional, plus everyone stays over there. Okay. Thank you. I noticed your south store has a uh, propane filling station. Yeah. Is this something that you want to do? Um, we haven't discussed that yet. It's not part of the initial. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know the market if it'll sustain two. Uh, again, all intentions are to keep that one going down there. Um, I got to pay the bill still down the street. <laughs> <laughs> any idea if, if this passes? Any idea of what you're looking at timeline wise? Uh, we're starting tomorrow if you say yes. <laughs> Yeah, so goal uh, with any of these is uh, under a year, start to finish. If not, he's in trouble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be one year start to finish. But again, steel has been just miserable lately. So we're six months out on steel. All right, any other questions from the board? Anyone in the audience wishing to be heard on this case? you guys? Yes, sir. All right. We do have a motion and a second for the approval of case B12-3-21. All in favor? Indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll be by tomorrow to see, <laughs> see how much you get done. Is there any other business to be brought before the board this evening? I'll make a motion we adjourn. Adjourn. All right. Anyone opposed? All right. We adjourn. Have a good evening. Keep in mind, guys, before you start.